Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Glory be to the most high God. We bless God for this another opportunity to be here in fellowship on one accord, glory to God. Indeed, it is a honor and a blessing to be alive, amen? Glory to God. The Lord has been good to us. The Lord has been good to us. Indeed, God has been good. The mere fact that we are able to join in tonight, it means that the goodness of God is upon us because we are alive. Amen. Glory to God. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday Word service. The Wednesday Word is a weekly service hosted by the Marie Burbick Ministries International. I am Sister Yolanda Smith, and I will be facilitating the service tonight. A warm welcome to you all on behalf of the head of our ministry, the Reverend Marie Burbick, and the entire ministry team. Tonight, I want to greet our ministers, Minister Marcia Wright, Pastor Tilo, the head of our intercessory team, Sister Claudia Grant Morris, and all our intercessors. To our regular Wednesday Word sisters and brothers, welcome back. We are happy to have you joining us again. And if you're here for the very first time, a very special welcome to you. We hope you will join us again and invite someone. We have a great service lined up for you tonight. Tonight, the word will be brought to you by Evangelist Oswin Burby. People of God, prepare your hearts and get ready for the spirit of God to move. If you are indeed blessed tonight, if you have a testimony, if you know God has been good to you, just unmute your microphone and just send up some praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Bless the name Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, we begin our service with prayer, which will be done by Brother Wayne Foster, who is the armor bearer for Reverend Marie Burbank. Hallelujah. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you, Lord. And mighty God, I come with a heart of thanksgiving. Father God, I wanna thank you for all your goodness. We wanna thank you for your grace. We wanna thank you, Lord, for mercies. Father, we wanna thank you that you are a healer. We thank you, Lord, that you are a hiding place. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are our love. We thank you that you are bread of life. Father, we thank you, Lord, that mighty God, you have kept us, mighty God. Father, throughout all this pandemic, you are, you are still God. You are still faithful to us. Mighty God, even when we are not, oh God, looking to you, even when we are not serving you wholeheartedly, God, you are faithful. And Father, tonight, God, we bend our hearts to you, Lord. And we ask you, mighty God, that, Father God, you will clean us up, mighty God. Father God, tonight, Lord, we pray that you will take over this service. Mighty God, we pray that you will anoint, mighty God, our speaker tonight. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, you will hide him behind every word. Let every word that come forth, mighty God, be of you. Mighty God, let him add or take anything from your word, mighty God. Father God, let your word come forth, mighty God. Oh, God, mighty God, as your word says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Father God, everybody 
oh god who come on tonight god with a stubborn heart with a stony heart mighty god let your word pierce that heart tonight mighty god oh god father god put flesh back mighty god even now turn the hearts of man mighty god father we pray that you will move mightily father god i pray mighty god for reverend mary i pray for this ministry mighty god father god that there will be an open heaven over this ministry father i pray in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that mighty god you will oh god pour out your blessing upon her mighty god in the name of jesus she shall be blessed in the city blessed in the field blessed in the going out and in her coming in mighty god people shall see her oh god and call her blessed mighty god as your word says eyes have not seen oh god and here ears have not heard mighty god i pray mighty god even now lord that you will order her step order her step mighty god in your way mighty god because mighty god your word says oh god for the step of a good man are ordered by the lord so father tonight lord we pray that you will order oh god our minister oh god um step mighty god we pray god for pastor t lock we pray for oh god minister uh, minister um Marcia, mighty God, we pray, mighty God, even for Sister Yolanda, that God, you will put your um, grace upon them tonight, mighty God. Father God, that every word that come forth will be of you, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, God, that you will bless everybody individually and collectively, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we pray, God, that tonight healing will be easy. We pray that breakthrough will be easy. Mighty God, we pray, mighty God, that the captain will say, free mighty god we pray that chains and and fetters would be broken mighty god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father we thank you for what you're gonna do we thank you for what you already done mighty god even now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father god we bind up the strong man everything that want to exalt itself above the will of you tonight we tear it down in the name of jesus we cover this phone line we cover oh god this zoom meeting we Cover it underneath your blood, mighty God. Let no weapon form against it prosper, mighty God. Even now, Father, we come against every distraction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we ask, mighty God, that you will curfew the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. And we commit this meeting into your hands. And Lord, we tell you, thanks, mighty God, for what you're going to do and what you already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Brother Wayne, for that powerful and comprehensive prayer. Glory to God. At this time, our scripture reading, our scripture reading comes to us from Isaiah 43, reading from verse 13 to, to verse 19, which will be read by Sister Lauren to pass. Over to you, Sister Lauren. Thank you, Sister Yolanda. Praise the Lord, everyone. The scripture reading, scripture reading tonight is from Isaiah chapter 43, reading from verse 13 through 19. Indeed, before the day were, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and who will reverse it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives, the Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of God. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you so much, Sister Lauren. At this time, our song of praise 
which comes to us from Minister Marcia. It will be sung by Sister Mar Minister Marcia Wright. My apologies there. Minister Marcia Wright, and it's titled No Foreign God. Enjoy.
It's you that I love No foreign God can take your place No foreign God can take your place It's you that I love It's you that I love It's you that I love it's you that I love, it's you that I love, it's you that I love, it's you that I love. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We declare tonight that no foreign God will ever take the place of our God, Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. None compares to him. None is like him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Father, we shall back your holy name. Hallelujah. Let me, on behalf of the entire ministry team, any one that is having a birthday today, happy birthday, happy birthday for those persons who had a birthday last week or earlier this week, happy belated birthday to you. For those persons who will have a birthday later in this week, we wish you a happy birthday and we want to speak the blessing and the favor of God upon your life. And as you celebrate, let us remember that we celebrate only because of the mercy and the goodness of God. Amen. Glory to God. So let us give God all the praise and all the honor. He alone is worthy. Amen. Glory to God. I want to remind everyone about the services in New York on Tuesdays. That's our Tuesday. I will bring the flyer up and give the directions again do for those persons who are in the tri-state area i encourage you to go out the services have really been powerful persons have been blessed there are persons who have been healed testimonies are coming out major testimonies of healing are coming out people are being delivered People are getting their breakthrough in their finances and God has just been moving. People of God, I ask that if you are in the tri-state area and you are able to go, just go on out. I will put the flyer up now. So there you have it. The flyer is up and it's 194 to 18 120th Avenue, St. Albans, and that's in Queens, New York. For further information, you may contact 516-601-4178. You may send a message and whatever questions, whatever queries you have, they will be answered. So again, Power Tuesdays, that's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. with Reverend Marie Burbick and the ministry team, Apostle Frederica Burbick, Reverend Marie Burbick, Evangelist Oswin, and the team there in Queens, New York. Amen. Glory to God. And I wish to share some snippets of the service that was held last night. So I will be sharing some snippets 
of the service that was held last night. It's the season of manifestation. The prayer for what God is about to do. There shall be no delay. There shall be no derailment. I look forward to your destiny tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Every one of you who is on a path that is not directly in alignment with what God has for you, I shift you now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the realms of the Spirit, I shift you back on track. Your destiny shall be fulfilled. It will not be derailed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, lift up your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Stand with them, church. Just stand with them and lift up your hands. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Father, I commit your sons and daughters to fill you tonight. Every one of them that you are pushing into their seas of manifestation. As I pray tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that every destruction in their lives be removed. I ask now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you bring enlightenment to them. Begin to speak to them in dreams and in visions. Give them revelation in the season, God Almighty, so they will walk uprightly before you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that everything, God, that you have planned for them shall begin to manifest. I pray right now that you will cut away, cut away, cut away in the name of Jesus Christ. Every person that is not a part of that plan for their lives, remove them, God, and remove them with speed in the name of Jesus. Cover them tonight under the blood. I pray that you will remove garments of doubt, garments of fear, any garment that you have not placed upon your life. Remove it now in the name of Jesus and begin to perfect that which concerns Andre. Perfect that which concerns Camille. Perfect that which concerns Brother Wayne. Perfect that which concerns my sister here, Melissa. Perfect that which concerns Evangelist Oswin. Perfect that which concerns your daughter, Sister Lauren. Perfect that which concerns Juanita. Perfect that which concerns Melissa. Perfect that which concerns Joel. Perfect that which concerns Claire. Perfect that which concerns Sharon. Perfect that which concerns Minister Robert Bill. I call you all by name because tonight you will move by divine speed into what God has for you. On the eighth day of the third month of 2022, I decree and declare something new is coming upon your life. It is coming with divine speed. The power of God shall move upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall receive double for your trouble. All the years that you have shed tears, the years of frustration, the years that you have questioned whether God has remembered you. Tonight, the book of remembrance is open. I decree and declare bless things are not outpouring upon your life now. Every spirit of delay over your life must be broken. You are moving through with divine speed. I come tonight as a servant of God standing in my authority to push you now into your next level. In the name of Jesus anything coming against the plan of God for your life. Anything coming against your destiny. It must shift tonight in the name of Jesus. I command that thing to lose you. Anything that has caused you to be stagnant must lose you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The fire of God must come upon you. You shall begin to speak with new tongues. You shall begin to move with alacrity. You shall begin to speak the things, the word of God. Those who have the word buried in your belly. God has released it to you. As of tonight, it shall come forth like rivers in the name of Jesus Christ. Let those rivers begin to flow in your dry places. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I decree and declare next level upon you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, move into your assignment, move into your call, I release your destiny, I release your love in the name of Jesus, may the power of God move upon your love in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth. hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, my God, fire of the living God, move upon you, move upon you now, move upon you, I release you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, every pain, brokenness, and hurt that you have been through. As of tonight, I release you. No more, says the Spirit of the living God. Your eyes are being opened. The Lord says, I'm going to use you, Andre, and I will use you mightily. 
The stone that the builders refused shall become the chief cornerstone, says the Spirit of the living God. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What is upon your life is powerful. What is upon your life is mighty. The Lord says, I've already been putting words in your mouth. And I've been speaking to you through dreams and visions. But in this season, they shall come upon you with speed, says the Lord. Enlightenment is coming upon you. I will use you as a warrior in the kingdom, says the spirit of the living God. As I speak, I see you, woman of God, with a sword strapped onto your waist. The Lord says that you're a Deborah in this season. A lion is hidden inside you, says the spirit of the living God. Tonight I command that lion to roar in the name of Jesus Christ. No more fear, no more doubt. You're coming forth in the name of Jesus. The fire that has been hidden in you must come forth tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The anointing of God that has been upon your life, Melissa, and quieted. Tonight I activate it by the power of the blood of Jesus. I command that fire to come forth now in the name of Jesus Christ. I lose your head, I lose your hands, I lose your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is your season of manifestation. Glory, glory, glory to God. That was a short video from the service in Queens, New York. Powerful, You're muted, powerful Sister Yolanda. things. I am muted. I'm hearing you clearly. I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, I'm hearing you. Okay, okay. At this time, um, Reverend Marie will come to us. She will bring greetings, but let me apologize. Rev will not be on camera tonight. So people of God, welcome Reverend Marie. Reverend Marie, over to you. Well, since you gave me a we might as well, like, come on. <laughs> Good evening. Rev, you know, the people always want to hear from you. If it's even two words, they always want to hear from you trying to get my voice back um I, I partially lost my voice so didn't really want to speak but just to say good evening to everyone and welcome happy to see you guys as usual and um i'm praying for you as always i want to say happy birthday to sister joan um joan jeremiah and everybody else we're celebrating a birthday this week um i also want to say thank you to all the persons who sent condolences and supported um, Sister Mel, read the passing of her, her father. Um, we went to the Thanksgiving service over the weekend. He got a lovely send off. So thank you all so very much. If Sister Yamina is here, as always, you are not 100%, but you support everybody else. Thank you for the support you gave Re, um, Sister Melissa's dad. All right, so thank you again to everybody who came out Tuesday night. And I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, next Tuesday. And when you come, please bring two people with you. All right. They are relaxing the, the COVID rules here in New York. So you can bring people. Bring people now and let us continue to grow. All right. God bless you all. Have a wonderful service. People of God, at this time, I'm going to ask for two short and spicy testimonies. This evening we will be having our Holy Communion and so our service, you know, will naturally be a bit longer. So I'm gonna ask for two short and spicy testimonies. You can just raise your hands. If you have a testimony, you may just raise your hand. All right, I'm not seeing anyone with a testimony. I don't think I'm seeing anyone with a testimony. Oh, Sister Camille Dowie, you may go ahead. Just unmute your microphone. Hello, good evening. Good evening. I was at the service yesterday and Rev prayed for everybody, of course. 
And I walk into work this morning and my boss told me that because she knew that I'm commuting and gas prices are up, she's going to give me a raise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Isn't our God amazing? Glory to God. <laughs> wow. Favor. My God. Mighty God. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing, Sister Thank Camille. You. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there another testimony? Another testimony? No? Okay. So we are now down to the word of wisdom, which will be brought to you by Sister Jasmine Moody. Sister Jasmine is one of the ladies who has been a part of the Kingdom Speakers training and also Reverend Mary Burbick's mentorship program. And so in true form to who Reverend Marie is, she is imparting and putting the people out. Amen. Glory to God. And so tonight we have Sister Jasmine Moody with the word of wisdom. Over to you, woman of God. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, dear. Yeah, so... As um, I just want to thank um Reverend Marie. You know she has been such. A, this has been a divine connection and a divine partnership, and this was all orchestrated by God. So I just want to thank um this ministry and every leader, um, ministerial staff in you know their rightful and respectful um place. I just want to thank you for this opportunity to um to grow in what God is calling me to do in this season. All right. Um, the word, the, the scripture focus for tonight is taken from um, Philippians um, 3, reading from verse 13 through 14. And it reads, and I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Have your way. Speak through me, Lord. Crucify the flesh and let your spirit come alive. Let this word be edifying, Lord God. Let um, it transform someone in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I've been listening to the word of wisdom for the last couple of weeks. And um, there was something that was profound with um, Minister, I think, Maureen, when she said access was granted. When um, Reverend Marie asked me um, to present, it was like a couple of weeks you know, and things keep happening. But for whatever reason, I kept hearing no. And I'm like, no, no, no. What, what does this mean? And God is asking us that no is the accepted time. So if mm -hmm. I should put a title on this, I would say that Sister Marie said access is granted, right? But God is saying no action is required and wow. this action no it is no and it is required and oh we're gonna have this action so we're gonna press forward to the mark of the higher calling which is in christ jesus but action is required because what he has given us access already so no it's on us to press forward but in order to press forward we need to apply action so this is what the message is on um, for tonight. So God is asking us to press forward. But how are we going to press forward? We need faith. Because a lot of us, what is going on in our lives, we're looking at everything that is going on. And God is telling us, now is the time to move forward in what I'm asking you to do. But you, we don't have faith. So God says, a no faith is required. And this is in the scripture because we find that in Hebrews um, um, 11, when it says, no faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So even though we're not seeing what God is saying, 
We need to press forward because we are looking, we cannot be looking at things in the natural, but we should look at things in the spirit. So in order to press forward, there are three points that I wanted to um, lift up tonight. And these three points, one of the three points is um, stop focusing on the past. One of Ooh, the things that hinder us from pressing forward is for us to be looking at what is going on uh, what has transpired or what has happened to us in the past. Listen, if you are going to move forward in what God is calling you to do, then you have to stop looking at um, the past. The scripture tells us forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. So God is asking us now not to stay there. The past, we're not saying that you're to negate what happened to you, but what God is saying, don't live there. Use the past as an example and move forward. The next um, scripture um, that I wanted, um, point I wanted to focus on is you need to shift your focus. Mm -hmm. What you look at, what, what you, you see in the natural, maybe it's not what God is doing in the spirit. So God is, and the scripture tells us, we look to the hills from whence come to our help. And we should look to God and not to man. We should keep our eyes focused on what is going on. If I could even speak about myself. I've been going through a lot lately. And if it wasn't for Reverend Marie, because I was focusing on the wrong things and, and that was hindering me. Even with, um, I'm, I'm in seminary and I failed that class and all I was thinking about is the class that I was failing. And because I was thinking on that class, it was crippling me. I could not do any assignment because I was thinking about that failed class. And I had to shift my focus to say, no, that was in the past. No, I need to, what I need to do now is important. So this is what God is saying. Your now, what you do now is imperative in how you're going to move forward in what God is asking you to do in this season. Another thing that um, we need to do is understand that the process, there's pain, the, there's purpose in our processing. That was something hard for me to even understand because when I, I think about you know, um, things that we're going through, you always try to blame the devil. And even one of the scripture um, that we always lift up, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, need of it enter into the hearts of men, the things that God has for us. God did not say that everything that he has for us is going to be good and peaches and cream. Some of the things that we have to go through is processing. And I had to learn that. So God is processing us. So what he's asking us to do in this season, to forget what is behind, look at what we do now and recognize that the things that we go through is not like it, it's not invisible to him he knows and he sees what is going on in our lives and we have to trust him so everything boils down to us trusting God in this season because what God is doing he is raising us up he's raising up a remnant in this season he is raising us up and he's asking us now to press forward in what he has called us to do listen God is is raising us and I hear this word manifestation and suddenly this is what God is doing now that we need to focus now and shift our focus from you know the things that is going on there's so many distraction in this season and God is saying listen no no more. You need to focus. Keep your eyes on me and press forward in what I'm calling you to do. Listen, some of the things that God is asking us to do, we may think that we're not qualified because we're looking at what others have done. Listen, God is asking us, all of us have a purpose and we need to stop look at others and look at what um, what worked for one person may not work for you. What, what worked in one season, hallelujah, may not work now. So God is saying now is the accepted time. Listen to what he's saying to you. Divine connection is so important in this season. And it's important for us to trust God, to read his word, because it's about time now where he is raising up people. He's going to speak to people and he's going to partner people, put people together where they can move forward in what he's calling them to do. So um, this word is not a long word. You know, this is what God has just laid on my heart to tell his people that this, the time is now. Whatever he's asking you to do, 
Do not despise humble beginning. Trust God. Trust the process. Yes, you may be going through, but trust me, there is a purpose for that pain. Listen, when we, when um, in order to get um, the olive oil, the olive has to go to a pressed. In order to get wine, the grape has to go to a pressing. In order for a child to be birthed, the mother has to press and bear down in order for that child to come out. So this is what God is saying. Some of the times, everything is not going to go all um, rosy. We have to go through um, you know, the processing in order to get to our next. So this is what God is saying. Shift your focus. Keep your eyes on me and watch me work in this season. God bless. My God, my God, glory to God. Thank you so much, Sister Jasmine, for such a timely word. People of God, as she has given the word, the time is now. Let us not focus on the former things because God says he's doing a new thing. Glory to God. And when we go through the challenges, the tests, the trials, it's not for us to look behind, but to keep pushing forward. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much, woman of God. At this time, let me um just welcome. I see Apostle Peter Chimbotello. Thank you so much, man of God, for joining us. We appreciate you. You know, you have been a supporter of this ministry. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining in, man of God. Glory to God. At this time, people of God, I'm just going to give you a few minutes to just get your items ready for Holy Communion, whether that be bread or crackers, wafers, and your non-alcoholic wine or grape juice. So I'm just gonna give you a few minutes to just get your items in hand. Minister Marcia will be conducting that for us tonight. Thank you, Sister Yolanda. Okay, good night, everybody. I do pray up to this point, we have been blessed. That, that word of wisdom was really, really a blessing to me. Okay, so I hope we all have our small piece of bread or cracker and our wine, not uh, alcoholic wine or, or grape juice or water if we don't have any of those things, okay? So we are here tonight to participate in the Lord's Supper. We are, we are inviting all persons who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior to come, come with us, come and join us. Come and join us as we go to God. We remember we have this solemn moment with him. All right, your emblems are beside you. And um, I'm going to be reading some passages. And after I've, I've read from the word, I will indicate to, to you when you may partake of the elements. Now, like I said, we are all invited to this table, but there's just one restriction. And that restriction to taking Lord's Supper is found in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 28. And that it, it says that we first examine ourselves for the purpose of confessing any area of known sin in our lives so that we, we might each be able, able to truly respond to the significance and the meaning of this important ordinance. So that only restriction is that we need, we need to at this point, examine ourselves, how we come to the table, all the things we know of and those that we don't know of, we need to put them at the, foot, at the feet of the Lord right now. So I'm gonna just pause for a few minutes and give us that opportunity to, to meditate and do that personal examination and confession of 
vaccines and to prepare us to participate in this ordinance. Just a few minutes, okay? So we can all now just take that those few minutes to reflect on our lives and ask the Lord for forgiveness for all that we know of and what we don't know of. Okay, okay, okay. I hope we have all been able to speak to the Lord and we are all ready right now to, to take Lord's Supper. We are now in the season of Lent and this, this time it's, it's potent. Lord's Supper now is, even, is so potent because we remember what Lent is all about. In, in a couple weeks or so, we will have Good Friday. What is, wh why is Holy Communion so important? Just a little thing I, I want to speak or say on this. Now, Holy Communion is our way as Christians to proclaim the death of Jesus Christ. And you might say to me, why? Why do we have to proclaim God's death? Why do we have to talk about God's death? We could talk about anything else that the Lord has done. We could proclaim his teachings or his miracles or even his life. But it's important to speak about the death of Jesus Christ because the death of Jesus Christ is the central message of our Christian faith. His death and the shedding of his blood was sacrifices for our sins. We were annihilated from God and his blood and death is what brought us back, that bridged that gap and gave us eventually the gift of eternal life. It gave us salvation. So every time we come to partake of Lord's Supper, right? We think of what he went through with his broken body on the cross and we think of his shed blood and it's because of that blood that he defeated death and we can speak, we have been restored to righteousness and we, 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 we can claim our rightful place beside him. Okay, so now we are ready. I'm asking each person, now we're gonna take our bread and our cracker and have in hand and I will, the passage that we normally read from is 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 24. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the, in the, in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we can go ahead now and eat our bread. As we continue, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. Please take your small cup of grape juice, non-alcoholic wine water. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup, well, I have a, a little, a, a sort of big thing here. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you, as often as you drink 
drink it in remembrance of me. So we can go ahead and drink our wine. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26. We have all now shared in the Lord's Supper. And I am asking that as we do this, because we, as often as possible, we keep in mind the death, resurrection, the death, the shedding of his blood and his resurrection. Because without his blood, we could not, we cannot claim anything. Any religion, any, any movement, we, our movement will be of north without the blood of Jesus Christ. And the fact that he is resurrected shows us that we serve a living God. He's not dead. A living God. So let's pray as we end our Lord's Supper for tonight. Father, I just thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness. Father, I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you that you loved us first and you sent your son, your one son, as a sacrifice to bridge the gap between fallen man and yourself, my God. I thank you for his blood. I thank you that his blood defeated death at Calvary. And so God, because of that, we know we stand in victory. We know that we have victory over the enemy because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for his resurrection. He's right beside you and we are his chosen because we have accepted the gift of salvation. Lord, thank you. Be with us. Help us, God, to live worthy, worthy of you, worthy of your name. These things we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Marcia. And just before Sister Yolanda comes back, Sister Yolanda, let me just um, welcome uh, Apostle, Apostle Peter. I know it's late where you are, Apostle, so thank you for coming on with us tonight, blessing us with your presence. Um, you're in Zambia, so I think you're like six or maybe, I don't know if it's seven, six or seven hours ahead. Also, I see um, Kenesha here, and I know she's in England, so we have quite a number of people who have made the sacrifice to come on tonight because they want to fellowship and they're like five, six, seven hours ahead of us. So a special welcome to all of you tonight for taking the time and coming on to the Wednesday word. And um, a special welcome too to Sister Sharon. I don't know if she was here last week. I'm seeing her for the first time. Sharon, Sister Sharon Phoenix, she has been attending the services here in Queens, but it's the first time I'm seeing her on the Wednesday word. So um, welcome to you, Sister Sharon and also to my second mother, Sister Irene, she's on here tonight. And anyone else who is here for the first time, just wave your hand, Sister Yolanda will, will formally welcome you. If you're here for the first time, just give a wave. If you know how to wave on Zoom, just give a wave so that we can recognize you. God bless you for coming on. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else. I'm not seeing anyone else who is here for the first time. Okay. So we move into the word. Amen. Glory to God. The word will come to us tonight from Evangelist Oswin Verbeek. And we know when Evangelist Oswin brings the word, it is a potent word. Normally, sometimes the word is a word that, you know, it requires introspection. We have to look into ourselves. Glory to God. But over to you, man of God, in the care of the blessed Holy Spirit. Oh, just before, just before I, um, just before Minister Oswin comes, I see in the chat, there is a taller family in Canada. They were invited by 
Sister Andrea Reed. So thank you so much for joining. We are happy to have you. Over that to you strong. now. Over to you, Evangelist Oswin. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure if you can hear me, if you can hear me. Let me, let me see. We are hearing you quite clearly. We are hearing you, but the microphone is somehow blocking a part of your handsome face. I see, I see. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll move it shortly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people of God, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thanks so much for coming on tonight, being a part of this ministry for fellowshipping with us. God bless each and every one of you who took the time out of your evening, wherever you are, to join us. And I pray that the words that I speak may be a blessing to you, not only a blessing, but, you know, bring change to your life. I pray that you get some knowledge, some wisdom and understanding from what I say, so that you may utilize these words to make your life better, not only in the natural, but also in your spiritual life and your spiritual walk with God. Uh, you know, I've recently made a slight change where, you know, before I get into the word, I will sing a song for you. So I want to sing a couple of songs for you, to, you know, just to get the the mood, get the vibe going, you know, bring this presence of God in the room with me and in the room with you as well. So I hope you enjoy these couple of songs that I selected. These are songs that you're used to and that you already know yourself as well. So let's get into it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of who you are, I give you glory, hallelujah. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are Lord I worship you because of who you are I'm singing you because of who you are I give you glory hallelujah because of who you are I give you praise Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Hallelujah. Jehovah, 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 Oh, 
talk to you. Jehovah Nisi. Don't you reign in victory. Hallelujah. You reign in victory. Jehovah Shadow. Hallelujah. I bless of to the most high God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is none like unto our God. His name is Jehovah. Jireh, our provider. We're not done yet. We're still going to sing some more. <laughs> There's nothing like singing praises to the living God. You know, you can get into the word and you can speak. I don't. It doesn't matter how great the word is. There's a different feeling you get when you sing praises to God. And a lot of times when I start to sing, I don't do it on purpose. It just happens. I close my eyes and I get emotional, man, because it, 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 it gives you a different feeling. It brings you closer. It brings the presence of God down in your area when you lift up and praise his name. And it creates a different atmosphere. Hallelujah. We're not done yet. We're going to sing some more tonight. This one is an oldie, but a goldie, one of my favorites. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. <clears throat> well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls me, calls me away. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Said the morning so bright, and the land is alive, and the night, the night is as splendid as the sea. Oh, yes, is there going to be peace for you tonight? There will be peace in the valley for me. Someday there will be peace in the valley for me. Till over now, hallelujah. There'll be no sadness, no sorrow. Oh, my Lord, no trouble. No trouble I'll see. There will be peace. In the valley for me. Hallelujah. We have to sing it one more time. Sing it, sing it. Say, Lord, I'm tired and so weary, but I must, hallelujah, go along till the Lord comes and calls me, calls me away. Oh, yeah. So bright, and the land is alight, and the night, the night is as bland as the sea. Oh, yes, there will be peace in the valley. For me, someday, there will be peace in the valley 
in the valley for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> There'll be no sadness, no sorrow. Oh, my Lord, ain't no trouble. No trouble I'll see. There will be peace in the valley for me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There will be peace in the valley for me. There will be peace. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Hallelujah. Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven as home? When Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he his eye is on the spell oh Lord and I know he watches me. His eye is on the spell. And I know he watches, he watches over me. Hallelujah. Sin. I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I'm free. His heart is on And I know he watches. Yes, I know he watches. And I know he watches me. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you go through things in life and you're wondering, does God see my problem? Does God see my struggle? And you have to remind yourself his eyes on the sparrow, even on the sparrow. Say so he's watching even over me. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord is in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God sees and knows everything, even the smallest of things in our lives. We think God ain't watching, trust me. He sees and knows it all, and he's concerned even about your little problem that you think ain't a big deal to him. Trust and believe me. You know, tonight's word, tonight's word, uh, the message is the enemy within, the enemy within. I want you to pay attention to this. This is going to be big food. This is yam banana, and this is probably fish. You're going to have to remove the bones because this is, this is real food. This is, this is not child's play anymore. The enemy within, the enemy within. This is an important message. You see, many a testimonies have come due to the work, due to the call, due to the mandate, due to the construction 
and the workmanship of his ministry. You know, lives are being saved. Souls are being saved. Um, deliverance is taking place. Even those who God has called from the foundations of the world, even those people, uh, they're finding that this place is like training ground for them. You see, this is the place to be. I say all that to say this is because ministry is God's business. It is where God performs his will through his servants for his ultimate glory. And this is important to the kingdom of God and his plan involving the return of Christ because, you see, the devil will send his agents with it. Are you listening to this? Not only that, but he will stir up the people that are already with it to cause confusion, to bring distraction, to become detractors within. Are you hearing me? Let me ask you a question. Who is the infiltrator in your life, in your personal life? Who is the infiltrator in your life? Look around, think about it. Who is the infiltrator in your life? Who has the devil sent in your life to destroy your destiny? Because that's the only reason why he sends them, you know. He didn't send them there to make you feel good. That's a deception. He sends them there to stop purpose and to destroy your destiny. Because I want you to understand something about the enemy. You see, when God puts a plan upon the earth, when he ordains men and women, when he sets something in motion, the devil knows. And when the devil knows, what is he going to do? He's going to try to find a way to stop it. You see, when they saw, when the wise men saw the star, that, that was the star of Christ, what did the enemy do? Got Herod all stirred up. Killed many innocent children to stop one man. Let me tell you something. The fight you're facing right now is the enemy stirring up people against you. Sometimes it's not even them, it's a spirit on them to come to destroy your destiny. Who is the infiltrator in your life? Who is the enemy, who's the enemy within? Ask yourself that question. You got to start looking around. <laughs> you see, the devil sends them there to destroy your destiny. He's planted them in your midst to distract you from purpose, to confuse you, to destroy you, to leave you bound. Saints, you got to keep your eyes open at all times. Eyes wide open. You have to move with wisdom, even as you move in love. There's a lot of people, a lot of Christians tend to not get this concept. You see, and many people talking about moving in love, but you ain't moving in wisdom. You ain't watching who around you. Christians tend to act naive. <laughs> you see, listen, the Bible says this. It says to love your enemy, right? So Christians, they, they become naive when they hear that word. That's why you need teaching. That's why you need understanding. Because a lot of times you hear words and you misinterpret those words to mean something other than what it means. You're supposed to love your enemies, but that's, that doesn't mean you're going to allow them to destroy you. That, don't mean they have, they, that doesn't mean they have to be allowed to be close to you. You also have to be watchful. Who is the infiltrator in your life? Who has the enemy sent to destroy your destiny and your purpose? Are you watchful of that? Is it in the world? an infiltrator, or what we call a saboteur. A saboteur is somebody who sabotages things. Um, they're about to search. They search, uh, and they find the, the subject. It's usually a high, heat, a high heat subject or object, something of importance. And they'll, they'll infiltrate. They'll find their way in, and they'll get a lot of information. They'll find the weak points. They'll find the weak spots, and then they'll destroy. That's how the enemy operates in your life as well. Who is the infiltrator? Who is the enemy within? Are you watchful? Are you paying attention? Sometimes you find somebody, you find a man or you find a woman and you think that person is the perfect person, but you don't know that's an infiltrator. You're, either, you're searching for a husband, you're desperate for a husband. So now anybody that comes and smile in your face, you think God sent them, no, the enemy sent them. The enemy know you're looking for a husband too. Who is the infiltrator in your life? Are you allowing the enemy to come into your life and set you up to be destroyed, to block your purpose, to block your destiny and create a distraction that puts you off so far from God's purpose for your life that you become, uh, you know, in Jamaica, when I was a kid, they used to say you don't grow. When you don't grow tall enough, they say you don't grow. So a lot of you are don't grow Christians. Why? Because guess what? You allowed the enemy to come in to distract you and put you off the path and your growth has stopped. Who is the infiltrator? In your life, who is the enemy within? This is a serious message. Let me let me let me help you understand something. You see, in the book, in the Bible, 
in the book of Nehemiah, the Bible says, I will not put my trust in the arm of flesh. I don't say that to get you all riled up and to get you all. You're in a position where you can't trust anybody at all. There's going to be people where you need to trust. What I'm saying is this, is that you have to be mindful. You have to search people out. People have to be tested. You can't be naive about who you let close to you, especially when you're a man and you're a woman of purpose. Because when you're a man and a woman of purpose, the enemy is always on the prowl, seeking to destroy that destiny, seeking to destroy that purpose, because your purpose as a man and woman of God is to build the kingdom of God. And the purpose of the enemy is to destroy that because he wants his kingdom to prosper on the earth. So if you're building God's kingdom, you're an enemy of Satan and he's always going to try to find any kind of teeth in the armor. He's looking to destroy you. Who is the infiltrator? Samson had an infiltrator. <laughs> But Samson wasn't wise, though, because the Bible says, curse is he that put his trust in man. Samson was gifted, but he was naive. Samson was anointed, but he was naive. Many of us are anointed. Many of us are appointed, but we are naive. And as a consequence, your purpose, your ministry is facing destruction. And you don't even know it. You've invited the enemy within. The enemy got you in a lap like Samson was in Delilah's lap. The enemy is rubbing your head, making you feel good. And you know they're trying to set you up. Who is the infiltrator in your life? Don't put your, don't put your trust in an agent of Satan. The Bible says the enemy will present himself as an angel of light. It doesn't matter how beautiful or how sexy that person looks. That might be an agent of the enemy. Who is the infiltrator in your life? Who's making you feel good? Who's being such a distraction that you can't see through them? That's why you see, as a Christian, as a man and a woman of God, you always have to bring things before the Lord. You always have to test things. The Bible says to try the spirit to see if it is of God. Not everything that looks and sounds good is right for you. Do you understand this? This is how ministries get destroyed. There are so many men and women of God who have fell from grace because they, tr they, they trusted the wrong people. God has sent them out to start a ministry. And they got their church and they lose the church because they trusted the wrong people. Somebody came in and you served them. Are you listening to me? Somebody started a business and you partnered up with people who are looking to learn all your skills and your talents. And once they feel like they know everything they need to know, they usurp you and kick you out of something that you started. Love your enemy, but that don't mean you need to be a fool. You always have to be wise. Are you listening to me? This is of high importance. You see, this ministry is going to serve as a platform for education, a platform for growth. This ministry is what I would like to call an incubator. If you don't know what an incubator is, an incubator is an enclosed uh, um, environment. It is uh, insulated and enclosed. You've probably passed by one, but you didn't know enough what they call it. Um, it's an environment with, con with conditions conducive for growth. So this is what we wanna do in this ministry, make it in an environment that is conducive for growth. Because in the modern church, they don't, they don't teach you anything for you to grow. They tell you enough for you to come Sunday, every Sunday, and you make it a routine, a religious routine, but you, you remain an infant in the spirit. You see, the only way to grow in the spirit is through wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. How do you get that? By reading the word. Do you understand this? When you read the word and you get more of the word in you, then you know more about God and God can draw close to you. No man can know God except through the word of God. Do you understand this? Many ministries today, many churches today have become dispensaries for entertainment. People are entertained by the prophetic. And when I say dispensaries for entertainment, I'm not just talking about music and singing and dancing. I'm talking about the prophetic. So many ministries right now, they're so focused on the prophetic. That's all people come for. They come to hear a word. Everybody come to hear a word, but nobody wants to hear the word. I've said that before, and I'm going to say it till the day I die. Some people come to hear 
a word, but they don't want to hear the word. That's why you got to keep running back to the prophet every time because you don't have no understanding of God. So when you come under, come under attack, you don't even know how to fight back. You got to call somebody because you haven't learned anything because you go to a place that is only conducive if you don't grow people, not for growth. You don't get taught anything and therefore you can't grow. How do you grow? Let me break this down on a, on, a, on, a, on a human level. How does a child grow? A child must be fed. How does a human being grow? A human must, being must be fed. And the better quality of the food, the faster you grow, the better you grow, the stronger your muscles, the stronger your internals. Are you listening? It's the same thing in the spiritual realm. What are they feeding you? Are you being fed with the true word of the living God? Are you being fed potent messages that are conducive to growth, that could get you in a place where you could advance in the kingdom of God? You have to ask yourself these questions. This is what many modern churches have evolved into, into entertainment centers, whether it's singing and the dancing or whether it's somebody prophesying and all of that stuff. Nothing against the prophet, but Jesus, even Jesus had a problem with the people that said this wicked generation, all you do is seek after a sign. There's some people who are always seeking, of a, seeking after a sign, but they're not seeking after God. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. If your heart is close to God, then you will seek to know him. And how do you know him? You know him by getting into his word, seeking out God, seeking to understand him. Are you listening to me? If you're a man and a woman of wisdom, if you're a man and a woman that is well studied, have the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of God, have the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of how to operate as a person in the natural world, then it's hard for the enemy to infiltrate. Why? Because every time the enemy sends somebody, you're going to be easily recognizing who the enemy is. But if you ain't got no knowledge and you have no understanding, then you're not going to recognize the enemy and then you're going to end up like Samson. You're going to get your locks cut and your anointing stripped from you, and you're going to end up blind. So many people right now are walking around blind, gifted and anointed men and women of God, but allowed the enemy to infiltrate. And as a consequence, they have ended up blind and stripped of their anointing. Who is infiltrating your life? You always have to be careful and you always have to be watchful. The Bible says to love your enemy. But just because I love my enemy, don't mean I'm going to let them get too close to me. The Bible says to forgive those who wronged you. But just because I forgive you, does not mean we still have to be friends. <laughs> I know, don't get this thing twisted, man. I want you to understand something because, you see, the, the modern church has taught you many things that are not necessarily true. They've given you this particular gospel that wants you to be naive. You, you, you hug up every, listen, just because you love somebody in a spiritual sense, don't mean you got to be hugging up on them. Don't mean they got to be coming into your house. Mm -mm. You pray for your enemy, but I'm not inviting them in my house. What am I, a fool? Who is infiltrating your life? Who's infiltrating your, your, your vision, infiltrating your ministry? coming like a, like, a, like a sleeper cell, setting themselves up to destroy, distract. Listen, man, some people are in ministries and all they do is run around with gossip and spread lies, spread rumors, always talking behind the pastor's back, all kinds of madness. And I know some of you know people like that because they come to you gossiping about the pastor too. Those are the infiltrators that the enemy have sent into the ministries. Watch out for them kind of people there. Because they have, listen, they have no heart for God. They're just religious people who, for, for whom church is just a routine. You see, because church is routine to them, they show up every week, but they ain't got no heart for God and they ain't got no heart to support the ministry. They come to see whatever drama they could find, who they could gossip with, who they can befriend and set up against the minister, set up against the church. You literally have people who brag about bringing pastors down. God ain't sending you to bring no pastor down. You're an infiltrator. You need to examine yourself and repent. Who is the infiltrator in your life? You see, the thing about infancy, when you're an infant, 
you lack awareness. And this is what many Christians, this is the place many Christians are because they have not grown. And the reason why they've not grown is because they've not been fed. You see, when you're an infant, you lack awareness, you lack wisdom. And this is what the enemy thrives on. These are the kinds of people that he's able to use because they're in ignorance. The people say, the Bible says that my people suffer for a lack of knowledge. You don't know anything. Sometimes it's your fault. Sometimes it's the fault of those who, who, who you're under. You see, because the pastor, the Bible says, I will give you pastors after my own heart. But many of these pastors are not after, after God's heart. Because if they were after God's heart, they would be feeding and they would be nourishing the people. Church is not a time for entertainment. It's a place where you must be fed spiritually. Spend, fed with the food of the living word of God. That way you can grow and remove you and move yourself from infancy into adulthood. To get off of the milk and get to the meat. Are you understanding this? So you send home the parishioners. You send home the people that are in a part of your ministry. And they go home and they suffer and they have the same problems over and over. And they have to keep running to you because you have not taught them. If you were feeding them, if they were growing, then they would need you all the time. And please, don't be one of those ministers. Don't be one of those pastors that feel like if the people don't need you all the time, then you're not important. That's nonsense. You're supposed to be feeding the people. <laughs> Look, I'm going to read you something, and I want you to I want you to grab your Bible. If you ain't got your Bible, if you go pick it up. If you have the Bible app on your phone, open up the Bible app. If you don't have a Bible and you don't have the Bible app, you need Jesus. That's madness. You got to have some way to read the Word of God. And when you get that Bible, I want you to read this with me. I'm not going to read this to you or at you. I want you to read this with me because I want you to get this. This is going to put the stamp on the message tonight about the enemy in the camp. Turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 2. 1 Kings chapter 2. In 1 Kings chapter 2, the Bible says, Now the days of David drew nigh, that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest with us over thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart, with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. Now here's where it gets hot. Listen to this, verse 5. Moreover, thou knowest also that Joab, the son of Zariah, did to me, and what he did to the two captains of the hosts of Israel, unto Abner, the son of Ner, and unto Amasa, the son of Jetha, whom he slew and shed the blood of war and peace. And put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his whore head go down to the grave in peace. Are you listening? This is what David is telling his son when his son is about to take the throne. But show kindness unto the sons of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and let them be those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom, thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Shemai, the son of Jirah, a Benjamite of Borim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Manai. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Now, therefore, hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. But his whore head bring thou down to the grave of blood. We're going to stop at verse 10. I wanted you to read that, and I want you to understand something. We are spiritual beings, but we're also living in the natural world. You see, when, when Solomon was about to take the throne, 
David was basically telling them to eliminate my enemies, to eliminate the threats. You see, many of you, you're about to start a business, you're about to start a ministry, you're about to get something done, and you got the enemy within, and you're playing soft with them. You need to cut them off. I ain't saying putting them to death because you're not Solomon and you're not David, but you need to distance yourself from certain people. You need to move with wisdom and understanding because if you allow the enemy to stay around and fester, what are they going to do? They're going to cut your locks off, blind you, and strip you of your anointing. Don't be naive. You can't give the devil, you can't give the enemy room to operate. Who is infiltrating your life? It's time for us as a people to move with wisdom and understanding in how we operate in our lives, especially those who are called to ministry. Who's the enemy in the camp? Who's looking to usurp you? Who's looking to destroy you? Who's looking to set you up? Who has the enemy sent to become a distraction, a disturbance, and a destroyer of your destiny, strip you of your anointing and leave you blind? Who? You got to learn to cut people off, people that don't mean you well, people that the enemy sent in your life to make you feel good, but they ain't here. They're not here to elevate you. They're not here to walk with you. They're here to destroy you. That's why that story of Samson and Delilah is so important. Some people miss the part where Samson was literally in love with this woman. This woman used to make him feel good. How else could she deceive him? She looked the part. She played the part well. That's what's going on in your life. There's somebody in your life that look, they look the part and they're playing the part well. But you don't know that's an agent of the enemy sent to destroy your purpose and your anointing. Who is infiltrating your life? <laughs> you see, how many of you know someone who was taken out, killed, destroyed, sabotaged, maimed, betrayed by someone, be trusted by someone, that was close. I know you know somebody like that. Because they were told to love your enemies. Love your enemies, but wisdom says love them from afar. Because you were told to forgive people. As I said, uh, forgive them, but wisdom says that don't mean we still got to be friends. I forgive you, but we're not friends no more. I can't let you too close. Because I see that you're an agent of chaos sent by the enemy to destroy who I am. You, you can't be a fool. You have to be wise in who you let close to. You know, a wise person once said, you probably heard the saying before, a wise person once said, if someone shows you who they are, believe them. So many people are in your life right now that you consider to be friends, consider to be family members or whoever. They already showed you who they are and you ain't cut them off yet. So when they do destroy, when they do cut your locks off, when they do sell you out, it will be your fault because you continue to be naive. The saying says, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. But the problem with many of us is that somebody will show you who they are, but we don't believe them. We continue to just, we continue to justify it, to push it off and say, no, not really, so I'm still, you know, let me just don't give them a chance. You're giving them a chance to cut your locks off, to cut off your anointing, to leave you blind, dead, and dumb. Operate in love, operate with forgiveness, but you also have to operate with wisdom and understanding. We're still living on a natural plane. We're a spiritual being, but we live on the earth, you see? The Bible literally says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who is the wicked? The wicked is the devil. The Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Do you remember that story of when the sons of God went up into heaven and the devil was also amongst them? And God said, devil, what have you been up to? What did the devil say? They said, oh, nothing. I've just been to and fro on the earth. Seeing what I could do, who I could destroy. What do you think the enemy is here to do? He's not here to be a friend. He's here to destroy you. I know the message sounds rough and I know it sounds harsh, but you need to hear that. Because some of us are too soft in our Christian walk. We're still on the earth. We're spiritual beings, but we're still down here. You have to be smart. You have to be wise. Even Paul, when Paul heard certain things about that was going on in certain churches, what did Paul tell him to do? He didn't tell them to listen, man, just be a bit of my man. I just want to give him a chance. Paul said, listen, man, put them out. <laughs> 
because you can't you cannot allow certain things to fester. You have to cut people off. You say, you say you're a man of God, you say you're a woman of God, and you're going to walk this walk. There are certain friends that you're going to have to cut off because those people are going to track you back out into the world. You're a man of God and you're a woman of God. That's why the Bible says you should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because when you're unequally yoked with an unbeliever, that could be an agent of Satan. Those are the people that Satan uses the most because the spirit of God is not on them. And as a consequence, they're open to be used by the enemy. To do what? To destroy your destiny. To cut your locks off, leave you blind, deaf, and dumb. <laughs> there was a story of the Trojan horse. I don't know if you've ever heard that story before. I'm coming to a close. This is a short message tonight. I don't need to say a lot of words for you to get the point. There was a short story. There's a short story about the, uh, the Trojan horse. This is a well-known story in Greek, in Greek history. It describes how Greek soldiers were able to take the city of Troy after they've been fighting for around 10 years, 10 years of fighting and battling. You know, the Greeks, they couldn't get into the city of Troy. They couldn't get to destroy Troy. So what did they do? They created a horse. They created a giant horse, and the horse was supposed to be an offering to the goddess Athena. The goddess Athena is the god that the, 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 the Trojans, or the, the people of Troy, they worshiped Athena. So now they think these people are giving them something good. They're giving them a, a, an offering to their god, Athena. But this horse, this giant horse, was filled with Greek soldiers. And when they brought that so-called offering into their city, they thought it was an offering to their god. And they brought it into their city. They didn't know they were bringing the enemy within. Who are you bringing into your life? Which Trojan horse are you bringing into your life? Have you examined the people that you allowed in your life? That you allowed too close to you? Allowed in your ministry? Agents of chaos that are creeping in with a plot and a plan and a mandate from the enemy to destroy what God has sent you here to do? Hmm? So many men and women of God that I've known over the years got themselves set up, got their locks cut, got their anointing cut off. I'm not going to call any names, but some of you may know that. Like in 1999, they were on fire. When they spoke, you get goosebumps. When they spoke, you felt the anointing. And in 2005, when they opened up their mouth, you felt nothing because the anointing left them because of what they allowed to happen to them. They got the locks cut like Samson. So you could use that story metaphorically as well. The things that the enemy will set you up to do, whether it's to, to fall to some kind of sexual sin, to some kind of, a, you know, some kind of theft, people stealing money from ministries, all kinds of foolishness that the enemy will set you up to do to destroy your anointing and to leave you in shame and disgrace. And usually has a little agent whispering in your ears. You think these people are your friends. You think they're for you. We well, you don't know they're an agent of chaos. They're an agent of Satan sent to destroy your destiny, sent to destroy your ministry, sent to destroy your purpose, sent to leave you blind and lacking the anointing. Saints of God, this is a serious word. This is a serious message. This is something that you needed to hear. This is something that you need to understand. And this is something you need to put in practice. You need to put wisdom in practice. That way you vet people, vet people out. Search the spirit. Test the spirit to see if it is of God. The devil will present himself as an angel of light, but he is the enemy. The devil will have you on his lap, on her lap, rubbing your head, making you feel good. But like my sister said, they're spiritual assassins. They are Delilahs. You see, the, th the difference between Delilah and Jezebel is that Jezebel is straightforward. 
the Jezebel is coming with her with her nails all out, ready to rip out your throat. Delilah don't come like that. Delilah come with her hand ready to rub it on your face, smile in your face, and, and flirt with you and make you feel good and lay you down and cut your locks. Who is infiltrating your life? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your people that you're opening up their understanding. Give them wisdom to understand. Give them a spirit of discernment to pick up on the wickedness of the enemy. Any plot and any plan of the enemy to destroy the anointing and purpose of your people, we put it to naught in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We disrupt, we disrupt the plans of the enemy. We destroy the plots and the plans of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People of God, this is serious. You'd be amazed how many ministries get brought down because agents, because Trojan horses came in and the pastor was watching. And the people at the pastor got around him wasn't watching either. Who do you have around? Who is your circle? Who are, who are the family members that are supposed to be watching out for your well-being? You know, sometimes as a son, you're dealing with a particular woman and you bring the woman home and your mother look at that woman and your mother say, yeah, she ain't the one. Who is that person in your circle that's looking out for you, that could discern spirits, know what is what? I say, yeah, that's an infiltrator. Get rid of that. No. We all need that. Put it into practice, my people. Put wisdom into practice. Put understanding into practice. Put discernment into practice. Vet people out. Don't let people in too easy. Don't let people get too close. Don't be naive. Don't be Samson. Samson was killing a thousand men with a donkey job. So great, so anointed, and got brought down by one woman. I don't know if you heard that. This man was destroying and dismantling whole armies. That's how powerful the anointing was on him for war. One infiltrator. He said, the devil said, listen, I can't use men. I can't use men with sword to kill Samson. So I'm going to send me an infiltrator. I'm going to send me a Trojan horse. I'm going to send somebody to blindside him because guess what? He's naive. Samson was looking for love. And the devil knew that. So he sent the right prospect. The devil knows your weaknesses. And that's what the infiltrator is going to come, for, come to fill. What is your weakness? That's another thing too. Some of us don't like to admit that we have weak points. What weak points do you have? Do you do, you do some kind of self-introspection to recognize where your weak points are? The places where you need help. The places where you know that, you know what? I can't do this, you know, because if I do this, man, I'm going to fall down. When you understand these places, then you understand how the devil could potentially attack you. But if you're full of pride and you act like you ain't got no weak spots, then you're primed. You're primed just like Samson. Don't be in, den don't be in denial of your weaknesses. Don't be in denial of the places that you need help in your life. That's where the enemy going to come. That's how he going to set you up real nice. You go from killing a thousand men with a donkey's jawbone to living in prison blind for the rest of your life with no anointing. Why? Because you let the enemy infiltrate. The enemy within, the enemy in the camp. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. All of everyone that have allowed themselves to be used by the enemy to destroy God's people, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Don't be a Judas. If you have a Judas spirit, recognize it and get deliverance. Don't be an enemy in the camp. Don't be walking around acting like you're one of us and you ain't one of us. Don't do it. God is watching you. What happened to Judas? Judas collected his 30 pieces of silver and then he's going to hang himself. Why? Because the guilt nearly killed him. Well, the guilt did kill him. He hung himself. You may feel good when you're doing it now, but trust me, the end thereof is destruction. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. 
Don't position yourself to be used by the enemy to try to attack and destroy God's people because the Bible says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Are you, you, are you allowing yourself to be utilized by the enemy against God's people? Do you even know what you're doing? Be careful. Watch yourself. <laughs> Father, we know that we're only vessels. We know that we're only flesh. We know that we are weak. But in the areas where we are weak, you are strong. So watch over us. Guard us. Before the enemy could put any plan upon us, God, fly the traps. Expose his plot in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us to achieve our destiny. Send us destiny helpers and not Judas's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anybody playing the role of Judas, expose them. In the mighty name of Jesus. And send us Jonathan Zinsen to be our helpers and our friends. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is the word for tonight. This is the word for tonight. I want you to take this serious. Don't let this fly in our one ears and go to the other. Don't let this get past you. I want you to take this serious. And I want you to move with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Don't allow the enemy to infiltrate, set you up, cut your locks off, and destroy your destiny. Don't allow it. In Jesus' name, Sister Yolanda, take back over. Mighty God, mighty God, what a word, what a word tonight, people of God. I told you that when this man of God brings the word, woo, I hope you would have listened keenly and you would have allowed this word to soak into your spirits tonight, people of God. Is there an infiltrator in your circle? Do you know that infiltrator? Are those infiltrators? People of God, we are encouraged. Don't allow them to cut our locks off. My God, glory to God. Thank you so much, Minister Burbick, for that word, potent, powerful word. Glory to God. I know I'll be going back over this word. I'll be definitely watching this again. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the life of this man of God. We bless you, Lord, for him. Sister Lillian, we're going to ask you to cover the man of God in prayer and just close us out. Just close out tonight's session for us in prayer and to cover the man of God. Over to you, Sister Lillian. Amen, amen, amen. Good night, everyone. Good night. Heavenly Father, your word tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from us. I come before you, dear God, submitting myself before you, Father. Have mercy upon each and every one of us for all unhealedness, dear God. Father, we thank you tonight for your word, God, which we know will catapult us into our destiny and into the next season of our lives. Father, we thank you, God, that you have sent your word to deliver us, to deliver our minds, dear Father, because many of us, mighty God, our minds is set in a place where we have to love our enemies. But as the man of God says, we can love them, but we have to use wisdom. So Father, teach us to use wisdom when we deal with persons dear father because god there are many that are sent to mighty god to destroy our destinies our mighty god derail our destinies our mighty god have us distracted but tonight we ask god that you'll expose every hidden assassin in our lives in the name of jesus every corner father where they have hidden Father, even if they are not hidden, some of them, God, they are in plain sight. But Father, we ask God that you will reveal them to us in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that you will remove the veil from our eyes, God, so that we are not deceived in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If it is a woman that is sent to a man of God to derail his destiny, or as the man of God says, cut off his locks, we ask God that you will expose her tonight in the name of Jesus. If it is a man that is sent, uh, mighty God, uh, to mighty God distract our sisters, uh, we ask Father that you'll expose him tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
Father, let your blood cover each and every person here tonight. Every who I'm represented here tonight, God, let your blood cover in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, you said that you have given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon every plans of the enemy. So tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, may we not be ignorant to the devices of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, everything that he's pregnant with, we command it to be aborted to the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we acknowledge that we are your children. Father, we know, mighty God, that we are ears and joint ears with Christ Jesus. But mighty God, we know that the enemy does not want to see us move into our purpose and our destinies. But God, every person that is sent to derail our destinies or to destroy our destinies, we ask you tonight, God, that you let expose them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we bless you and we honor you for this word because God Almighty, it is something, Lord God Almighty, that is well needed in this season because Father, as mighty God, the woman of God said, you are raising up an army in the name of Jesus and through this ministry, God, there will be an army like mighty God, like no other. And so, Father, we ask God that you cover the man of God. We ask God that you surround him with your angels in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and we declare that no weapon that is formed against him will be able to prosper. Mighty God, and every tongue that rises up against him in judgment is already condemned. Father, we ask God that as he has poured out, that Father, you pour back into him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, God, that you will grow from strength to strength. We ask you, Father, that you will increase the anointing. We ask God that you increase the anointing, increase the oil that is upon his life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that you'll hide him from the enemy. We ask God that any person that is in his life, mighty God, hiding, we ask, Father, that you'll expose them in the name of Jesus, every spirit of sabotage. We ask, Father, that you'll expose in the name of Jesus, every Jezebel, every Delilah. We ask, Father, that you'll expose them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you for this platform. We bless you for this ministry. We ask you, Father, that you will visit, mighty God, your people tonight in the name of Jesus, in dreams and visions. Father, may you show them the hidden assassins. May you show them, Father, mighty God, may you show them in dreams and visions tonight, Father. Who is the infiltrator in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus? Whether this person is in their house, whether this person is at the workplace, whether this person is in the church, we ask you, God, that you will expose, reveal to your people in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, mighty God. That you, mighty God, will not sit by and let the enemy prevail over us. We thank you, God, that you will not sit by and watch our destinies be derailed. We thank you, dear Father God, that you have sent your word to deliver us in the name of Jesus. We thank you this night, Lord God Almighty, and we mark this night and we declare that, Father God, our lives will not be the same in the mighty name of Jesus. We refuse to remain in bondage. We refuse to let our minds be held captive in the name of Jesus. So tonight, Father, we ask God that you'll release our minds in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of us, you have shown us who they are. But because we are in denial, Father God, we cannot separate ourselves from them. But tonight, God, we ask for Holy Ghost scissors. May you cut them off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare that your people are free from every infiltrator 
in the name of Jesus. They are free from every spirit of sabotage in the name of Jesus. They are free from every evil attachment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare that they are free, their mighty God, they are free because the word said, who the son sets free is free indeed. Father, I declare that they shall run through troops and they shall leap over walls in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask God, that your Holy Spirit will dwell with them to lead them and to guide them in all things. May they listen to your voice. May they hear your voice louder than the voice of the enemy. Father, cover each and every person here tonight. Cover this ministry. Cover Rev. Cover Evangelist Burbick in the name of Jesus Cover mighty God, the man of God, apostle that is here tonight. Cover him under your blood in the name of Jesus. Cover his family and his ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Sister Lillian. At this time, I want to welcome some persons who I'm seeing for the very first time, I'm seeing Kenesia Spears. Let me hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Kenesia Spears, Sandris Smith. Um, let me see if there's anyone else. Welcome, welcome, Douglas McKay. We are happy to have you. Thank you for joining us and we pray that you have been blessed tonight and you will join us again and we ask that you invite someone. Sophia Morgan, I'm not quite sure if it's, if it's your first time. I'm seeing Novelette Brown. Let me see if there is anyone else. And if you are here for the very first time and I have not acknowledged you, you may just raise your hand. I'm seeing Tani. Tanika Stewart, let me hope I am pronouncing your names correctly. And if I'm not, please forgive me. Amen. Welcome, welcome. We are all happy to have you. Glory to God. People of God, if you have been blessed by the word of God tonight and you are led to sow into this ministry, I will put the means by which you are able to do so. I will put that up on screen. So if you have been blessed by the word tonight, if you have been blessed by this ministry and you are so led to so, please feel free to do so. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you all. Thank you so much. I will put that flyer up on screen after which we will close out with the song Victory by Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful night for those where it's still night and for those who it's morning. We pray you have a great morning. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you all so much. So there you have it, people of God, for those who wish, wish to sow by Zell, it's 516-601-4175. That's Zell, 516-601-4175. For those who wish to do so by Cash App, it's Marie Burbick. For those who wish to donate by PayPal, it's paypal.me slash Reverend Marie Burbick. For the persons in Jamaica, it's Scotia Bank, Mandible Branch. It's a checking account. And the account number is six. Hold on, let me just catch that. 652-697. So it's Scotia Bank Mandible Branch, and it's 652-697. Thank you so much, people of God. Thank you for joining in. And for those persons who wish to partner with this ministry you may send a message to Reverend Marie Verbeck through the number 516-601-4175. Amen. 
Glory to God. Thank you so much, people of God, for all those persons who have been an ardent supporter of this ministry. We want to thank you so much. We invite you, people of God, to go on the YouTube page to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. That's Marie Burbick on Facebook. So please, people of God, go to the Facebook page, subscribe, like, share, comment. It's also Marie Burbick on Instagram and Reverend Marie on Facebook. Glory to God. Thank you so much, people of God. We will close out now with a song. Good night. Victory belong to Jesus. Not hearing any songs today, Lando. Good night, everyone. Sorry to learn that you were not hearing the song. We are so, so, so very sorry that you were not hearing the song, but God bless you all. Thank you all so much for joining in. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.